What's up guys, Kill em Softly here, and today we have a little bit different piece of content for you guys. This is going to be a tips and tricks video for the newly released early access game Valheim. Valheim is available on Steam right now. I've been having an absolute ball with the game. If you've just got into it, you've got some questions, and hopefully I've got the answers. So if you're just starting out on Valheim, this video is perfect for you because there's a lot of hidden in-game mechanics that aren't necessarily explained very well. So I'm going to try to do my best to explain them and uh, get you on the right path to slaying all of those demons to satisfy Odin. So one of the first things that's going to help you out a lot um, as far as in the menu system is using control left click and shift left click. Control left click will quick move items from your inventory to a container or from a container to your inventory, vice versa. You can also quick move items out of your inventory, like throw them out into the world. So if you're just out in the world and you hit tab, you can throw things out of your inventory as well. Also with shift left click, you can shift left click on an item and then that will give you the option to select a particular amount of that item to move. So when you're building things, you've probably noticed that you can snap items to each other. It can be a little finicky when you're first trying it out. This tip kind of helped me out a lot. You use the crosshair and aim on the edge of items, then they seem to align to what you would expect. Um, so it's a lot easier to snap things if you just take your crosshair and move it on the edge of a building item. So another tip for building is that you have to take into accountability the structural integrity of the things that you're putting together. And there's actually a mechanism in the game that kind of shows you where your structural structural integrity is at. If you aim at the pieces that you've laid down, you'll be able to see color coded like how stable that building item is. And once a building item turns red, that means the very next thing that you attach to it is going to collapse. So if it's red and you stick something on there, it's going to fall down. So essentially what you need to do is put up some structural support to hold that weight of the building. So that's a pretty cool mechanic. So let's say you made a mistake by putting the wrong building item in the wrong spot or it didn't snap to the right thing. You don't have to pull out your axe and hack away until it destroys it. You can just simply click middle mouse button on that item and it'll instantly destroy that item and you get all of the the materials back so that's a quick way of fixing a mistake while you're building or if you want to like tear something down and move it you can tear it down really easily like that and get all of your materials back to build it somewhere else so this is another interesting thing that your middle mouse button does when you're in the map the like world map it will put a ping marker inside of the actual game if you're trying to figure out well what direction is my house you know while I'm running around in the game trying to get back to it you go into the map you ping where it's at. When you exit out, you'll be able to see that ping in the game world so you can run towards it. So as you use your items in the game, you'll notice that the durability starts going down on them. No need to worry. All you need to do is go over to your trusty workbench and there will be a little tiny hammer right beside all of the craftable items and you basically just spam that button and it repairs all of your items in your inventory. This costs absolutely nothing so feel free to do this as much as you want and especially when things break, don't throw them away you can just take them to a workshop and repair them. So if you've played Sea of Thieves, this mechanic will kind of make sense to you. When you're sailing, if you have your sails at full sail or even half sail and the wind's blowing directly at your ship, your ship is literally not going to move at all. The only way to get around going into the wind is to put it in the like first I don't know what to call them, but first gear, the first like one speed where you're just paddling, that is the only way to move around when you're going against the wind. So you kind of have to plan your journeys. You have to plan them around which way the wind is blowing. And the wind is actually the little arrow in your mini map. That arrow is the wind direction. So it's displayed at all times for you. So you may not have noticed this, but when you're crafting items, some of the items that you can craft will have a details option and you can actually change the way that those items look. You can have like different paints on your shield and stuff like that. So when you're looking for your first serine cores, which you need to build your refinery and stuff like that, you have to search in skeleton crypts. When you're looking around for skeleton crypts, it can be kind of hard when you're in the forest and it's, you know, like dense foliage everywhere. It can be hard to find them. If you take your raft or boat and you sail around an island near like a black forest, you'll be able to see the fog a little more clearly when 
and all the vegetation isn't rendered, sometimes you can spot crypts pretty easy that way. So for those of you that are like me that absolutely love the Dark Souls series, you may have started drawing some comparisons between Valheim and Dark Souls, and this is kind of a big one for me that stood out right away. Your character has iframes when you roll through attacks, just like in Dark Souls, and it's actually very useful when you're first starting out and you're kind of a soft squishy guy. So just like the iframes from Dark Souls, this game also has a parrying system as well. And you may have already figured that out, but did you also know you can parry parry projectiles too. If you time the parry right, you can actually parry them from a distance. So this kind of confused me when I first unlocked the recipe for wood piles and stone piles. I wasn't really sure what they were for. They are just for storing wood or stone. So if you have 50 stone or 50 wood, you can store them by basically crafting that, that item. So this is a weird one that you may or may not have noticed yet. When you build your campfire, if you build it inside of a building or have it in an enclosed space and you don't have it properly ventilated you'll notice you'll start taking damage that's because smoke is an actual physical thing in the game if a room is filled with smoke then there's no oxygen and your character can't breathe that's like a pretty realistic survival detail if you don't know that you may be wondering why the heck am i dying in my you know base or something well that's why you just need to properly ventilate a building if you have a campfire burning in it All right, guys, so that's all of the tips for today. If you've been watching the Twitch channel, you know that I'm absolutely obsessed with this game. So if you are not following the Twitch channel, be sure to head on over there, follow the page, tune into the streams. We stream every weekday at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's where all of this content comes from, with the exception of my silly voiceovers that I'm so nervous about doing. So if you do enjoy this type of content, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll keep making content like this for you guys. All right, y'all have a good one.